All right, Coronavirus Local Fiscal Recovery Funds Committee, January 31st, 2022, 5 o'clock p.m. Um, I don't, last time we didn't choose a chair or anything, did we? Nope. We no. Talk about it? Nope. nope. Anybody have interest in being that? Nope. 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 <laughs> How about Good you? Good conversation. Yeah. I'll keep going then. Is is everybody here? Is there anyone absent that we can vote in? <laughs> Holla. Bob yeah, Holla. Bob Holla. Yeah. There you go. Mm, okay, he's in. He's it. <laughs> Isn't that how it usually works? Yeah, usually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, review and vote to approve meeting minutes on November 18th. I make a motion we approve the minutes of the March 18th meeting or whenever. Second. It was. Okay. All right. 18. Any uh, discussion? No. No. Right now we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, I'll do it as on my screen. Uh, Fred? Yes. George Ann? Yes. Uh, Tom? Yes. Becky? You bet. Paul? Yes. <clears throat> cool. Um, I don't know if I'm part of this committee or not. Yeah, you are. If I am, I'll vote yes. <laughs> you should vote yes. Yeah. God bless you. Um, all right. Um, discuss pro process and methodology for reviewing project ideas and making recommendations to the select board. But let's, <clears throat> before we do that, let's talk about where, we, uh, where we've where we been. Um, I think there was some confusion after last meeting, but I think that's kind of, <clears throat> worked itself out with time. Um, so, I mean, what we have received from, and this just went out to uh, town departments and boards and committees, was just to try to gather a list of ideas um, as to what folks had in mind for the use of this money. Um, and I had sent out what I had received back um, and it's page and a half list, I guess, of different ideas that we received. Um, it also, I mean, it also occurs to me that those are, this was an internal solicitation. So it doesn't get it. We didn't seek out input in terms of what, um, what other uses of funds uh, might be eligible for um, activities outside of the town. Um, and I don't know if that's something that we want to explore. And if we want to explore, how do we want to explore it? Um, so I guess I think it, just a, a discussion about, about that would be good because we sort of have town ideas, um, but there's this other eligible area of activities. Do you, by outside of town, do you mean outside of like town governance? Yeah. Okay. Such as? Um, so we could, so one of the categories is, is pretty much economic assistance to homeowners, economic assistance to small businesses, economic assistance to nonprofits, um, those types of things. Um, so there's that tradition. Typically, when we get the money in, it's like, OK, we spend it on, I think, era, right? It's like town infrastructure. Like, this is what you can spend it on. This is this is much more broad in terms of its scope. Yeah, yeah. well. As a group, do who we determines feel? who's qualified? Um, well, it would be whatever program that the that the town sets up. Let's say it was economic assistance to small businesses. We would have to we'd have to set some criteria as to what would make the the business eligible. Mm -hmm. if it was lost a certain amount of lost revenue or something like that, but it would vary per program. A lot. I would think. Sorry, um, Brian, the, um, it, I think one of the things that Fran and I had been talking about, and I think I talked to you about it a little bit too, is um, I believe that this program requires um, um, that we let the let citizens, let, let Waitleyites <laughs> know what we're doing. So we need transparency. And that then starts... Um, um, a question of how much dialogue we have with the town, including input from town people about it. So I think that should be part of our discussion. And it seems 
to apply to what you're talking about too, because um, it means that any ideas we come up with, we're going to get feedback from town people. And so therefore we want to, um, you know, think about how we're going to present it. Am, am I right about that? I, I believe it's required that we have, that we communicate with the town about it. How would that happen? How would those communications roll out uh, while we're in the process of doing this? And so and that's, what's... that's part of the, the, this discussion. I mean, not, you know, the example I can think of, and you were on the, uh, panel two was when we were talking about the um, um, uh, center school. Yeah. You no, know, that was a, I, I thought that was a very good process. I thought it was a great yeah. way to reach out to yeah. town people. Yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> we, one thing we could do is emulate that process of creating um, a, a list of ideas, examples of ideas mm -hmm. that we can then send out to town people. It's, I, it's yeah. I, I was thought going to say it takes time, obviously, and mm -hmm. we had initially talked about things happening kind of quickly, but mm -hmm. it seems like where this requires, um, again, transparency, we're going to have to kind of slow it down. Yeah. Um, you know, with that center school pr process, I thought the mechanism was good. Um, I just didn't think the results were all that hot. I, I, I didn't think the um, you know, the, um, the returns of surveys, the, uh, the online stuff, when you looked at the total numbers of people that actually participated, um, I don't know, I felt it could have been better. Um, maybe I'm shooting a little too far. We could learn from that in terms of outreach. I will say this, <laughs> that when, when you're talking about money there as opposed to here's yeah. a project that could be really expensive <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what does right. everybody think about it as opposed to there is money available for the town yeah it's very possible that we'll get more feedback it might be harder to process it but um but it is a it's a different um proposal True. even even here's money we could use for the center school <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. I, I, yeah, I think that our discussions have to be cast in a slightly different light in light of the memorandum that Brian sent around today, that we've been thinking in terms of absolutely having to spend it within the, uh, the guidelines. And now we seem to have this option, at least a fallback, and I don't want to go to it immediately by any means, of just transferring the money to the town without any questions asked. So that's sort of an escape hatch, but it does change the nature of the discussion from what can we spend this on within the parameters to what do we want to spend this on, preferably within the parameters, but not necessarily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if you turn it over, over to the town, then it pretty much becomes, um, and an activity of select board and finance. Um, do you think? Uh, well, it, it, it could be, I mean, this committee could recommend, you know, turning it over with certain, you know, not strings attached, but recommendations for its use, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is essentially all that is going to be done anyway. Right. But to say, you know, here's the money, put it aside for mm -hmm. X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing anyway, isn't it? Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the, the um, which brings me back to Rebecca's thoughts is that if we get strong communication from the town in regards to direction on how to spend this money, um, it's going to be hard on our part or and anybody's part to sort of veer away from that, and uh, you're going to have to take that very seriously. I th I think anyway. What do you mean by that exactly? Take what seriously? Well, what I mean is if um, you put a survey out to the whole town and, you know, it turns out that 95% of the people would like to see the money spent on infrastructure. And then in, 
we can recommend that. And if the money is just turned over to the town for the select board and the finance committee to make some type of a decision on it, they are pretty much directed by that communication, by the, um, you know, by the townspeople as to what they feel the money should be spent on. Um, and I guess that's what we're doing anyway. Um, yeah, I, 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 I can't obviously speak for anyone else, but for myself on the select board, I would find it very hard to spend the money any place that was not directed. Right. Or, I agree. You know, not, not to spend money as it was directed by this yeah. committee. Right. right. A committee right. of citizens. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um and um Brian, can you um give us a better sense of what your understanding of what transparency needs to look like for um communicating with the rest of Waitley? Um <clears throat> I mean I think I think we should probably have a public input session, you know, at the least. Um whether we <clears throat> whether we go beyond that, I think is a question of Yeah, I, I'd, I'd have to think about it a little bit more, but I, I would think at the very least, um, we would want a public uh, a public info session. Yeah. Um, you know, one that's advertised well in advance and 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 gets out. Um, Can I just um, ask a question real quick? Uh, and, and I think I, I I think Fred had brought this up on the last meeting, and that's in regards to. Uh, awarding some of these monies towards, um, well, in particular, the transfer station um, attendants who are town employees. But my question is this, if we give it to one town employee, do we have to give it to them all? And um, is that a question that has to go to legal to, uh, to determine that? And the reason I bring that up is, if you recall, a number of years ago, the um, uh, Union 38 gave bonuses to um, longevity, pay. longevity pay to individuals who were town employees but worked in the Waitley Elementary School. And that happened for a few years. And then the other town employees came forward and kind of demanded that money because these other town employees were already getting it. So we were, you know, so we decided to give it to everybody uh, based on a certain criteria. But I'm, I'm just wondering how that plays out here. I, I would say this, that I believe the issue is that other town employees got hazard pay, but the transfer station folks did not. Is that correct? I no. Know. No. No, no, no one has. No one has? So it was uh, more identifying that the, um, that the transfer station was particularly exposed without right. protection? Is right. They were particularly, had particular public contact. Yeah. Because, I mean, another thought would be, in, in a lot of ways, it seems like that's something the town should pay for no matter what you know, rather than it being this money. I mean, granted, obviously this is connected to um, uh, the pandemic, but that seems like something that should be decided fairly quickly. Whereas this is something that we have a, a very large span of time to think through. Um, I don't know, it, it just seems like something that should be decided much more quickly than we can do. And again, this is, a, this is something that needs to be transparent. Whereas that seems like Something the town should just do. But it, did everyone in town get paid? And the only people I have in question that didn't get paid might have been the cafeteria workers. I know some of the schools uh, prepared lunches um, for the kids that when there was homeschooling uh, on the computers, but. The, the actual cafeteria workers, were they like, the, had deductions in their pay because they weren't at working during that time when the kids were home? 
did they have to go on unemployment? Uh, I I don't know. I don't think they went on unemployment, but I don't know where the wages that's, cut. That's a good, they very would, good question. Good yeah. question. Don't know the answer. Um, they would be the only ones in town who did not get paid. Um, my well, I would also. It, if you, you got hired for a job, you do a job, um, you're considering uh, the transfer of people is being exposed. Well, you got to look at it too. The teachers in school and all the staff at the school were more exposed than the transfer of people. So you're, sure. you're going to cause some hard mm -hmm. feelings here. Yeah. And I can tell you that, that we had... In, uh, in Waitley Elementary School, we had almost 100% attendance by our educators as compared to other schools where teachers refuse to even walk in the building. So there is that. But George Ann, you bring up a good point in regards to the cafeteria workers, because if you're looking at them, I also think you have to look at the instructional aides whom I believe are pay, paid on a per diem basis. And if they're not yeah. there. Yeah, those, you know. those would be the only areas in town that I would really put on the list would be those two. So, so we're, what we're talking about here is, um, is what we would be using the money for, but I think we're, we still need to decide what our process is for how we're going to decide, right? before we get to the specifics um, because because otherwise you know it, yeah I, I feel like we'll we, talk all day yeah exactly okay. it would be good um, to nail down how we're how, how we're going to go about it. like for instance Brian I love that idea of a public discussion session because you know Paul you remember how it, it took a lot of time to create that survey and a survey may good. not be the most appropriate thing for this but it seems like right. we should decide what kind of public outreach, how much, how much work we're gonna do on that. Um, yeah. and then, we can, then we can say, okay, we've got that. We can plan yeah. ahead for it. Um, and then, you know, then maybe talk more about um, specific ideas. Does that yeah. make sense? Um, I think that has uh, some merit to it. Um, do you think that this committee, like we should come up with like top five categories um to consider i don't know i mean i'm just find, trying to find a way here I'm trying to find a uh, a path for for us you know to narrow it down i think that we can uh, we would start by putting it within the parameters of the initial memo uh you know, let's for na for now ignore the fact that we can just give it to the town to make up for lost revenue, right? You know, that, like put, you say, put, put that aside as a yeah, you know, yeah. down the road mm -hmm. possibility, yeah, or sort of a you know last gasp, but present it within those initial categories. Okay, all right. So I guess I uh, down. otherwise we're just asking for an open-ended opinion. What should the town spend money on? Right. I agree. Then there's no purpose for us to even be here if that's the case. Well. Um, so, all right. So, who was the individual, um, Rebecca? Do you do you remember the individual that put the survey together for the um, center school? I don't remember her name, but it would be pretty easy to find. Um, yeah, but so I guess that so. Do, do we feel like the first thing we want to do is decide how we're going to go about bringing the public in and then go from there to decide what parameters we use to choose? Does that make sense? Yep. yep. <coughs> sure. You, you don't think we should go back to this uh, given money to essential personnel we probably should do that first and foremost, and then take this survey that we get back from the townspeople or whatever and go with that? Or do we go with this 
some of the things on this list that we got? Well, the thing with the essential personnel issue is that this, this money, we have, I think, five years to spend. Is that right, Brian? No. Yeah. Three? About, or, or three years. Three. So we have a really long period of time three years. to decide what the money goes toward. Right. And so that gives us time to decide. Um, the personnel issue is one option for the money, but there are other options. And I, I don't know that, I mean, given, I don't even know what kind of number we're talking about if we're going to fund essential personnel, but it seems yeah. like it'd be a very large amount of money, more mm. than this is. I mean, I, again, I don't know. We'd have to look at it, but I think um, a, a couple of folks have mentioned that if we're going to do that, we'd, we would have to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know what kind of numbers that would be, but that seems like, I don't know, that's not a small thing. And so I, I don't feel comfortable just saying, yes, I agree that that's, that's something we should use this money for. Um, not only that. To talk about it, but and it's yeah. important. I don't want to say that those people don't deserve money, but I don't no, know. No, no. The best. no. Those, those individuals, if we were to, um, if, if in the end, the, these monies were to go to personnel in town, that would be a reward in essence. Thank for you. For, thank you for, right. right. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for being there. It's a reward. It's like a bonus. Okay. It is not need based. So I, I, I kind of think that we sh should have some kind of a discussion as to where the true needs are within the town for these monies. Um, and you can say, and it, it, it probably going to end up being some kind of a debate because, yeah, I mean, you can say infrastructure, but then you can come back and say, yeah, but that's already being paid for by, you know, the budget. And, um, you know, you can say that people should be rewarded for doing um, their job is in essence. I mean, that could be a comeback to the reward aspect of it. So if you come out and you and we look at an needs assessment as to which areas are the most needy that's tough that's tough to uh that's tough to combat uh, well I, paul i think there's an issue you're talking about needy mm -hmm. but i think our first requirement is to remedy any situations that were caused by covid rather than going at ahead with need for the future uh, i think that's a need so yeah it, I agree. It, it can they it can be a need but yeah uh, so it seems I, like but i think it's two different two different things one is look back is there anything we need to compensate yeah or make you know, provide for yeah, uh, for I mean, what has happened rather right. than what. Yeah, yeah. So these well, seem happened. like these seem like criteria that we should be putting on our list of how we're going to go about deciding or recommending um, the money be directed. Right. So one would be um, um, uh, result of pandemic. Direct effect um, of COVID. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 The infection itself, the pandemic, um, and then another would be. Um, uh, what is it, one of the things that I've thought about is what, what thing could we do with this money that would impact the most different interest groups in town or the most people in town? Um, so um, full disclosure, I'm a big fan of um, walk bike infrastructure. So I've loved the idea of ways to fund that sort of thing. And I can see, so I'm, I'm just giving this as an example. I'm not pushing it by any means, mm -hmm. but um, um, bike paths and sidewalks are something that are outdoor exercise. So, you know, it's something you can do during the pandemic. It's something that benefits lots of people and it can even interact with, intersect with other towns. And it's also something that we've talked about for the town. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's very loosely connected to 
pandemic stuff, but that's an example of something where you can take funds and have a huge impact that can include a lot of people. So, so that's another, I, in my mind, that's another thing you can add to the list of things to think about slash criteria is mm -hmm. how many people does it benefit? So. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, in the, uh, in the spirit of full disclosure, I think that, you know, the last time we spoke, uh, you heard me talk a little bit about the, the children in our schools who have lost significant time. And I had a chance to speak with the principal over at Waitley Elementary, and she absolutely agreed um, that there, there, there are a number of children that are getting left behind. Um, and much of it is um, economy-based. Um, those kids that didn't have the support, those kids who didn't have access to computers, those kids who didn't have, who weren't literate with computers um, are falling behind. And um, the thought of having some kind of an enrichment program for children in these schools, uh, whether it be reading, writing, you know, whatever it might be, or as an aid to some kind of tutorial program. Um, nothing's been, you know, put together. There have been no numbers put on it, but I think as a committee I, that um, that section of our population needs to be strongly considered because these kids lost time and they don't even know it. Um, yeah. So... That's kind of a, that's a need. Paul, can you think of a, a, a sort of a broad category of criteria that that would fall under? Um, and Brian, are you taking notes? <laughs> it's recorded. Okay. It's recording. Okay. Yeah, it's recorded. And the, um, the other question with that is how do you quantify it? Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, how do you quantify what? How do you quantify loss of education for children in terms of money? Well, I think you have to, um, I think you have to rely on the educators within the school to be able to uh, communicate that. And it, it um, you know, I don't know, if, I don't know if, if you'll ever be able to get test scores or any of that in, in, in time to have these monies have impact on those types of results. Um, but we do pay these people. These people are, at least in in our eyes, the experts um, in the educational community, and um, I think we have to take some guidance from them as to what. Well, yeah, no, but my, my question is how theoretically, what are we going to spend money on that will alleviate this problem? Is it tutors for the children? Is it? It might be. That on the list, and and one thing that's they will develop that, a list. Yeah, one thing uh, you know. In the, I included most of this on the list already. Yeah, exactly. And what's nice about something like tutoring is, it you know, I know what you're saying, Fred. That like, you could say, well, how much, um, how how much have kids lost because of pandemic? But another thing you could say is, let's create a, a tutoring program for Waitley, and. It will that that helps kids catch up and granted some of it could be pandemic related but it's also helps a broader just kids who need help you know so that's a good point okay. prove that it's all pandemic related but you know i mean if it's helping kids um do better then that's a, a great broad thing so um but anyway paul can you think of um again like a where if we're thinking about criteria for um, how we're going to look at different um, uh, suggestions. Can you think of a, a, a line for that? Yeah, um, so I think that those kinds, um, boy, I'll tell you, it's... Um, or you can think about it and, you know, get back and, and I can, yeah. you know, we can all try to think because it's like, you know, helping kids is a great thing. And, and it's, again, it's something that would help in the long run, I would think. Let me give that a little thought, okay. I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm only gonna say a couple of things and then I'm gonna shut up. One thing 
that I've thought of when looking at this list. Some of these things on this list, like we'll take the schools, hire a math specialist to work with students. Work, if we hire a person in three years, this COVID money is gonna be gone. Who's gonna pick up the tab for this person? $29,000 for a part-time health worker, a community health needs assessment, whatever. In three years, the 29,000 isn't gonna be there. Who's gonna I, pick up that? I can speak to that because I'm on the board of health, but go on, because I'll, I'll, I can get back to that. But, you know, then we'll go back to the schools, replace the carpet. We're three years into four years of doing that anyway. The dishwasher, air conditioning, yeah, I don't know. Mm. You know, some of these, some of these things are already fit into, are already in our uh, uh, long range plan, our capital planning stuff. So Thomas, maybe like for criteria, stuff that isn't otherwise planned for. Right. right? That's, so that's, <laughs> that's very good. That's, and also that's, stuff, stuff that, stuff that is short term and, and doesn't need to be funded with other money later. <laughs> right. Right. Well, you know, you got to look at it from the, uh, the, the taxpayer's point of view, so to speak. And, you know, if you, let's say you fund a, a tutor, a math specialist for three years and it costs $25,000 a year at the end of the three years, the town is going to have to pick up the 25,000. Well, not necessarily. I'm, well, I'm well, could you <laughs> what you gonna go? Is it gonna go away, Paul? I mean, uh, well, it's not gonna go away. But if we have that discussion with the um, the schools, that they're just gonna money, add it to their budget. Right. Well, they might, and yeah, they will. They and may anyway, but they, it, they it'll either anyway. become a permanent position or drop. Those are your yeah, but if it's, right, right. You know, exactly. you got to look at it from from this point too, Fred. If exactly. you if you hire somebody and you after three years you tell them we can't afford you anymore, you got to go. Well, then they're going to be on our unemployment, and yep. we are self employed for unemployment. Yep. 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 So the 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 board of health needs assessment that is a temporary thing. It's you know it's a it's a it's a it's a, a survey that you do to find out what weight we need in terms of um, medical issues, uh, public health issues, that sort of thing. Well, and the, the, uh, there's another capital project that Tom, you may have, and Paul may have seen already. For instance, the town needs a new, uh, needs a new a new program to handle the taxes. And one of the things, one of the problems they've had this past year is that it can't be done from home because the program that we're using now doesn't allow it. Secure, so you can't do it from home. This could certainly come under that. It's a one-shot thing, but it's a, and it would help the town, but it would really, it's an administrative thing. It would not help right. a huge number of people, mm -hmm. but it would make the town more efficient. True. And, and it's it, something we're gonna need anyway. For other and reasons. There's this isn't going to be our only pandemic, probably, right? They right. we're going to have to deal with this issue um in different ways in the future. So sorry, sorry to bring any bear of bad, potential bad news, but so that seems like um maybe maybe the line item of um capital needs projects because those are you know one time large budget. I I mean, I think of that as helping a lot of people, Fred, because it's, you know, if the town needs it, the town needs it. So well, I mean, it, it, it helps the town, but specifically it doesn't benefit on a day to day basis more than a handful of people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, just to, yeah. The um, also um, now I know it was brought up and it's 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 on the list kind of thing, but, um, you know, providing air conditioning in the school. Now, if that would have come on a regular budget in, in an ordinary year, 
I think there would be a lot of pushback for it. Well, get Again, ready. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. there'd be a lot of it's coming. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But there'd be no, really, it's coming. Yeah. I know it is. And there but, will be, but, but you can't think of it. Air conditioning in the school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you, you got to think of air conditioning as purifying, not just like having it cool during yeah. the hot months. And I think Rebecca said it. I mean, we no one has any idea as to whether or not there'll be another pandemic coming down, you know, at some point. So that kind of uh, that kind of air conditioning, you know, scrubbing the air um, within the schools, um, you know, is something that is very, very real. Oh yeah. Not to mention climate change. It's going to get hotter. So yeah. We have to think about things like that. Uh, which brings up another thing, um, which is- Public pool. <laughs> you know what, uh, Paul, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I love that idea. Why are you guys laughing? I think, it, I, it's, I think it's a really good idea. If you're um, gonna have climate change, get a pool. It's, yeah, it's, unfortunately it probably won't cover the cost of that, but still. Um, no. Okay, uh, sorry, sorry. No, no, I let I mean, you know, put that on the list, man. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, but um, we, we have we have a pond with a beach that needs help too. Yeah, seriously, yeah. that I, I know you, we really that do. Great, that is a really great oh. point. Mm. Um yeah. So yeah. I mean, these are all on the list. Um another thing is um I don't know if you've um uh, been hearing uh, Joe Comerford's work on um, uh, getting help for municipalities to work on um, um, siting for solar panels that can um, uh, help um, foster um, play, uh, siting them on things like rooftops. So, you know, the municipal building being a, a great example of that. Um, but I could imagine this sort of money going to something like that, because talk about decreasing cost for the town. Um, again, with climate change, um, if you have solar panels that can run the air conditioning, that's a kind of a win-win thing. <laughs> so that, that would be another situation where I could imagine directing this money um, and uh, kind of dove, well, dovetails with well, the reason we have the pandemic, so. Well, and that, but that's why this reason, I think that's the reason why this committee was set up the way it was with representatives of health and finance and schools to distill those ideas yeah. and then make the recommendations. So what kind of line would that be? That would be like, um, I don't know what, how, what you would call that. Cause I, I like the idea of us creating, again, creating a framework with sort yeah. of a, che a, a checklist, right? Like how many boxes do each of the ideas um, check off and the, the more might allow that idea to go to the top. Not that we'd have to do that, but it could help us um, narrow down ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brian, you getting all this? Okay, good. As long as the thing keeps recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I think, I think this is all great. I think this is I think this is all great, um, but I, I guess I come back to what don't we know? Like, like what else is out there that we don't know, and how do we how do we find out? Um, Meaning ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we've kind of had a narrow. The group that we've shared this with is, right. we all have one thing in common. That's all we have relations, you know, relationships with with the town, right? Right. Um, but what else, I guess, how do we figure out what else is out there that, that may be worthy of? Um, okay, so funny. how, so let, let's just take a look at, it was mentioned before and it's on the list. Um, who here thinks that, that assistance to private businesses in town warrants a discussion? I feel like the, the c coming up with these different criteria help us. I mean, that should be on the list of, of possibilities mm -hmm. and having like criteria that help us 
um, imagine and narrow can help us decide how appropriate or reasonable that is. And Brian, getting back to your question, very important question, I feel like having these criteria can help us think of other groups we want to reach out to. You know, I'm thinking of the farming community. Um, um, is that who you, maybe that's who you were particularly thinking of? The farming community, thinking, yeah. which is central to Waitley, obviously, um, yep. and um, and uh, other nonprofits. Which so maybe we need to be writing the list of who are the nonprofits in Waitley. Um, it's amazing what you can come up with when you actually sit down and think about it. Um, uh, and then, so in other words, expanding to different groups and representative entities, and then going from there to the public to present what we've come up with, because that can, you know, having a completely open-ended um, ask can get a little tricky. Having a more constrained ask right. um, might be helpful. Um, yeah, anyone, I mean, so I immediately think of CISA, I think of, um, yeah. I think of CIFSA um, uh, and yeah, I would wonder what other nonprofits there are. Anyway. I mean, I, I guess what I go back to in terms of like small businesses, it's like, can we do something to presumably, I'm acting on the assumption that the past two years were not good for most small businesses. Um, right. You know, is there some type of marketing campaign that the town can do for all small businesses or the farms is there you know is there something that 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 we could do to help them out um or or, or help them generate more business it's not that we're gonna you know, go support them with this money but can we can we encourage others to support them with their money and those types of things and what's neat, neat about something like that is that's something that could again it's almost like a capital campaign in that if you like say you created a a search engine or a website or something that was you know weightly positive <laughs> um that's right. something that could continue mm -hmm. on beyond this so it'd be a neat investment so that's a neat idea yeah yeah yep i don't know how it would work but right that's that's where we can start getting creative or, or you know getting feedback from entities but um you know you know could you have um well this is getting down into the weeds and but just throw it out there in in relation to the agricultural community in this town could we have things like um you know a place to sell their goods could we offer advertising on the town website could we direct, could we have, could we put signs up in town to direct people towards um, the goods that these individuals are selling? I don't know. I mean, yeah. all of those things um, certainly I think would. that that that's all good, but I think that's for an economic development committee more than this committee. Well, we have well, money. We have, we have money that could go. Well, yes, and then, then the economic, economic development right. committee can come to us yeah. to ask for some money. But I think that that would be part of a, a large, and, and there is some thought about it developing an economic development mm. group. Yeah. And yeah. but I think that's really outside, a little bit outside of our scope. It may be an area we would want to fund if they came to us and said we need X yeah. thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. To set something up, but I don't think it's for us to set it up. Fred, no. what, where is that? Where, where is, where is the thinking on that? It sounds like you're saying that there's been some. some the thinking is primarily in Jonathan Edwards' head. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well, we got that going for us. I, he he makes a big point of it, and I have heard him talk a lot about it, so. Yeah. And maybe we can push and move that along. Yeah. How do, how do we reach out to some of these other people, Brian? You kind of, I feel like that we, you know, we have a short list here. I was kind of anticipating a bigger list in all honesty. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think it's, it's, it's narrow because it's, it's just town, right? Um, oh, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I'm trying. I I feel like there, where was there was a stakeholder list generated. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't remember what it was for. Whether it was for the economic development visioning. Um. There are stakeholder lists that have been created for other things. Um, and maybe that's a place to start. That's great. Um, but what's our tool for for so I'll 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 give myself homework and I'll 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 try to find out sort of that stakeholder list of of different nonprofits, different business, anybody outside of the town of lists that we may have. Um, but what's the tool that we use to 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 reach out to them and get the information back i guess yeah um, is it a meeting is it a is it a is it a survey is it i think it's a I, I i think starting with the survey and starting with some advertisement about the survey whether it be in the um what's the little paper the, yeah the scoop oh. um or the local online paper. um so we advertise about the survey and what, and what the survey means and um, and then put the survey out and see what comes back, I guess. Um, but um, either that or we give it all to the town and just call it a night. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding, yeah, be careful. Or, or we uh, can do it sort of the way the finance committee does it hearing budgets and that is schedule that. but it's essentially a public hearing yeah to elicit people say if you have an idea come to us and present it mm-hmm. which is difficult to do to do via zoom not it shouldn't be that difficult you know do them one at a time and set up okay you know, yeah. 10 15 minutes per presentation and give them a time slot they could do yeah i i think that's real um and i think that's be, better than making someone you know put it down on paper to yeah submit and just, plus yeah, and submit plus, a proposal to us yeah, yeah. um i think we might scare people off if we ask for proposals well no so submit an idea first brush. and come, come and mm-hmm. talk to us about it no we're just going to ask for outside of the government right not 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 with it. I'm kind of, I guess I'm assuming I, I, I shouldn't assume this, but um, if we we're going to ask for people to come into a meeting <laughs> to discuss proposals, it wouldn't be, um, you know, within the, the government of the town within right. it would be extraneous right. to that. I think the people right. here pretty much represent okay. the what's government. known in the government. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brian, I, what are you yeah. envisioning in terms of what were you picturing in terms of um, seeing and getting feedback? Uh, I think I'm of uh, I'm of really two mindsets. I, I think one is a survey will probably get us a, a, a more ideas because 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 folks will just submit ideas, but I think a public information. S- session may get us more concrete and actionable ideas um because it 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 takes a little bit more to to show up to a granted it's a zoom meeting and it's really not that hard but it but it takes more effort to show up right yep. so presumably we'll have people who are more who are more serious about it um, agenda. because I, I think what we're looking for is actionable ideas from somebody that has the capacity to do it outside of well, maybe we're thinking for both. I mean, yeah. I don't know if we need to limit it, but yeah, um, so yeah. yeah, like like th- there are probably entities in Waitley that we're just not thinking of that could really yeah come up with something neat and or could really use it, and you know, mm-hmm. so right, it, um, increasing the creativity um, fodder would be could be very helpful and then um uh yeah um that's a it's a form of getting public feedback and, and um 
transparency yeah okay um, yeah and um yeah anyone else have any thoughts about about criteria because I, I like the idea of creating some kind of framework for us to like um be able to look at ideas and say hey this really fits with our vision of what would what this money could be especially effective for i i, I have a thought but i don't know that it falls in criteria it gets back to the uh, the taxation accounting program at what point do we feel comfortable saying we want to recommend spending money on x because some things are time sensitive. The town is going to be buying a program mm -hmm. or a set of programs to do this within the next nine months or whatever. And yeah. how long can this committee say, well, we want to see all the options before we commit any money? Or do we say, okay, we want to spend on this, recommend, and then instead of having $450,000 to commit, we now have $420,000 to commit. Could we? We, we just have to make a decision on when we want to I agree start with you, Fred. committing, you know, say, yeah. we are going to want yeah. to do this. And before we, when we look at all these monies, all this money, do we want to get back to list, listing area, listing um, recipients or listing those um entities those bodies within town and drawing um drawing a definitive line between need-based and reward-based and now under need-based you could have personal situations you could have for instance the cafeteria workers on need base you could also have tax program that's a need um reward um could be something else but those are to, in my mind those are the two areas that are very broad five thousand feet and what whatever monies go to home whomever it's either going to be because of a need or because of a thank you because of a reward it, it's i kind of think that's what it boils down to well there is another set of criteria that, or um, another framework of thinking that's very different than that, which is how many people does this benefit? Or is this something we wouldn't do otherwise that would be really great for the town? So, you know what I mean? So you're, you're talking about duality, but I am, it's a very different duality. I, yeah, yeah, there's- I'm in, kind of in favor of that part of it. Uh, the, the sheer number that it's going to impact that's going to be, if, so that could be, sure. I mean, that yeah. could, so that that could be, be a box. That could be a criteria also. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're describing, I can imagine like um, within the pan, the experience of the pandemic, um, what kind of need was created by the pandemic? Um, what kind of, let's say heroic behavior did we see during the pandemic? So those are some things that we could imagine directing money to. So that that could be, again, a line of criteria. Yeah. Under, in both of those examples that you just spoke about, one was need and one was re reward. I, I'm sorry, in terms of um, like how many people it benefits? Yeah. I mean, regardless of the monies are going to go out. And the money is going to be given to, to someone, some program, and it's going to be given because of a need or because of a reward. And, and that's I, I and un, un, under under that umbrella, you can certainly have, you know, number of bodies that it helps. Um, number of people that it affects um sure that all falls under that umbrella um that's what i think um i don't know um so well um time for coffee <laughs>
mean, I, I think the discussion is really good. Um, and I don't know how long folks have tonight. Um, I guess where do we where do we go from here? So to Fred's point about time frame, um, I think again that's where having some criteria helps because if some great idea comes up, we all agree. Oh yeah, we really want at least some money to go to that. Having a framework for saying it really fits with a lot of what we've all agreed it would be good. That, I think that could be really helpful because my gosh, I mean, you know, when there's money to be spent, you could come up with so many different things that would be a, would be good to spend money on, but maybe not this money. And so, if we have a set of criteria that we all can feel pretty comfortable with, that might be, make it easier to make our decision. Um, and so, it, it seems like that list would be really important. And then making sure that we feel good that we've really reached out to people we could imagine benefiting from this or being appropriate for this would be important. And having a time frame for like, it would be reasonable, like we've given this enough time that we could actually jump on something. So for instance, Fred, you'd mentioned that, the, I think you said it was a tax um vehicle yeah, tax management the real management, estate management yeah. so so for instance if there's something that's going to happen within nine months like for instance that seems like a a reasonable amount of time for us to to decide yeah we could spend that and maybe maybe three months is reasonable for where we could start saying yeah you know what we can start dispensing this money well um, it, that, that particular one is going to come up at town meeting let's say in april this year okay. yeah. it's Great. it's in so, it's in the pipeline already and so the question is at that point when it gets the town meeting are we talking about paying for it out of how do we fund it free cash how, how much money is that fred 35,000 okay. so maybe and, maybe in terms of time frame having having something ready so that it's ready by town meeting um you know a, a system in place so that at least by town meeting, we can we could be ready to fund something. You know, does that does that seem reasonable for a time frame? Yeah, I think we just yeah. have to set up because obviously this is going to be a rolling process right. of exactly alloc of appropriating money. It's not yeah. we're not going to be able to appropriate it all. But you know, look at everything and in two years say, okay, we're you know we will have funded. You know, we're, we're set to fund. We've got to start whittling down the money. Yep. Uh, or and then keep in mind of what we've got left. We haven't what? gotten the money, have we, Brian? <clears throat> we have half of it. Oh, we'll we get the next. Get we'll get oh. half uh, next June. The other half. Okay, so we have yeah. half of it. If we vote to, if we decide to spend some of it at town meeting, we have the money. Um, it's just a select board. Uh, it's just a select board vote to spend it. Oh, you don't. It doesn't have to go through town meeting. Correct. Well, no, yes. but but fund funding some of these projects in another way right. would be a town meeting. Gotcha. You know, approving yeah. the budget. Right. Or so spending free cash is a town meeting. One other um, criterion on the list could be that when you have a large amount of money sometimes you can do something that you wouldn't be able to do if you had lots of small amounts of money. So that, again, just, just for a criterion, I'm not saying that's what we should do, but if there's a really big capital thing um, that you couldn't do if you didn't have a huge chunk of money, it's just something to think about. This is, this is an opportunity that could be amazing. Like, and again, just a, for instance, you know, Paul and I, and I can't remember if anyone else was on the, um, the, the center school project, but like, that's a great example of something that with a huge chunk of money, you might be able to do something really cool. So that's another thing for us to think about, I think. And I think, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm gonna hop to, to give this committee some kind of direction and a roadmap we have this money, almost a half a million dollars, 
and we could as a committee say that just in general the way we're going to look at this money is that we would like to allocate 50% towards need and 50% towards reward and then build under that those areas that that narrow our focus in terms of the need and the reward. Now that may change. The 50-50 doesn't have to stay there because as you develop understanding from the community as to what the community would like, there may be a lot more needs than there are re rewards and it ends up being 60-40 or 70-30. Or but at least we as a group have some kind of understanding that 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 we're going to look at these monies in in a certain way all right i think we if we're breaking it down that way we are far enough into this now we can determine what the reward situations are because that's retrospective looking uh, yeah so that yeah, we, i don't think we need to set a a set percentage, but we come to a decision, you know, we want to compensate X, Y, Z groups of people, mm -hmm. say, okay, do it. And then we move on to what you would term needs. Right. Ra rather but, than mm -hmm. determine up front, well, we have, you know, we want to spend this much on reward. We, you know, reward, again, rewards are retros are looking back. And we can look back and say, yeah, what, and do we, what do we want to compensate? But how do you present this? You know, and, 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 it, and that format is very important so that there's understanding right, right across the board as to how the spending of this money was approached. And that's why I personally think that you, you need to dissect um, the efforts and you've got to start broadly at the 5,000 foot level level and then narrow it down underneath that umbrella. Um, it's a process um, and you have to get your hands on the process. Um, okay, then, then it, with that in mind, I would say the process should be our next action step is to determine what rewards we want to fund because then that will tell us how much money we have left going sure. forward for the the prospective looking things yeah it give, I mean, right i agree with you i would interject that when you present that to me that seems like another line of ways to look at this rather than the first the first way we broadly look at this that doesn't because i that i have to confess that doesn't resonate with me that doesn't feel like well we start with that and then we go from there it's more like that is one way to look at this so it, it seems like a reasonable thing to consider but it doesn't feel like it's the ultimate only thing to consider I, and i agree and i and i absolutely agree but the it has to be a stepping off point and you have to be able to corral that and and have um, um, an orderly fashion as to how you bring everything together. And um, and I, I, I just don't see no, another way to approach it that is orderly, understandable, and you can put it down in black and white and be able to present it as such. Um, that's well. I think that isn't that the 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 list of criteria that Brian is going to glean from this discussion. I I, I can imagine like maybe five or seven lines, including you know number of people benefited, reward versus um, um, reward versus need. Um, uh, um at the, like i can't remember if we had a specific line for um kids and tutoring you know like the, the an impact that was um big during the pandemic that could we could see continue to have benefit um 
uh, a capital a capital um, expense. So it's a one time thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel like there are there are things that could go on this list that we can look at compared to each other, kind of like the list that Brian has already generated. We can look at that list and pretty quickly say like. Um, Paying for a teacher maybe doesn't make sense, but um, paying for a, um, something like the tax process, maybe that makes sense. So we're already able to sort of envision things that seem to fit better than others. So I, I, I agree with all of those points and all of those points need to be collected and positioned. And what, the, what I'm hearing now is a disheveled approach and that is that, and we got to try to get a, to take that dishevelment and bring it together and get it into a category and categorize these things. And to me, and the topmost categories for the distribution of these monies are either need or reward. And from there, you can list anything you want under those two cat categories and then make a decision from there, which of those categories, uh, those subcategories you're going to fund or recommend for funding. Because, you know, right now we're just throwing out, you know, needs and hopes. Okay. So what do you think, Brian? Do we uh, get, you're going to find other, uh, we talked about the businesses in town. So can I, can I. I don't know what's going on here. No, my internet's terrible. No. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, I mean, I think there's there's two things here. One is one is have we cast a wide enough net to know what's out there? And the second the second question is once we have a list that we're happy with, then I think we look at the criteria and then we try to prioritize and we have this discussion about about what we feel about those those certain projects. So I I think step one is do we have a do we feel like we've we've cast a wide enough net that we're happy with our project list? No. And if not, how do we how do we do that? Well, at the same time, we can also be working on on these the ways that we want to organize what's on that list. Um, so that when we do get the list, we've kind of at least have a consensus as to uh, of those criteria that we've been talking about tonight. I feel like the the creating the criteria help can help us imagine who we want to reach out to so i feel like having both happening at the same time could be helpful um and, and i feel like we've come up with some criteria during this discussion and so i'm yeah. i'm looking forward to the list that you create brian <laughs> yeah um, in the minute so that that's sort of how i'm anticipating sort of next steps is we you can distill some of what we talked about today and then we can see in print what it looks like and see how they relate to each other. So really, you know, what, I'm, what we're doing is we're trying to create a list of things that relate to each other that help us then look at um, um, ideas and say, this really fits with the sorts of things we're talking about, including, you know, um, reward versus need. But that's, that's one thing on the list, another being how many people does it help, which I feel like my, my personal response to that is that those seem not one and then the other under it, but rather two comparable things. But you know, maybe when we look at it on the list, it won't make sense. So we can yeah. talk about that further. And then, I mean, I think any of us that can come up with entities in town that we want to reach out to would be valuable. And also, Brian, maybe from your standpoint, you can be extra helpful with that list. Yeah. Yep. I'd like to uh, propose one thing here that we desperately needed at the water department is a storage garage. Um, 
due to the fact that we had to put in so many filters, um, we don't have any room in there. We can't store lawnmowers, parts, gas, oil. It's infringed on the other working area that Wayne has. Um, and I don't know how to like prioritize this or upgrade it, but I mean, this is something that we drastically need out there that's not on any capital plans or budgets or anything right now. It's on the water department list, but there's no money attached to it. That was that's right. one of the questions. Well, yeah. these things get put, put up, but we put two filters in and we just put in three brand new pumps in that other section where we do all the pumping and um, water storage there. The other section of the pump house, um, if I could right now, I'd send you a picture of what it looks like. And it's not a, let's say a, a good environment or a healthy environment for anybody from the PEP or anyone to come in there and look at it. Hmm. Well, it sounds like maybe maybe you all could, do you think you could come up with a, um, a number to put on that because then we could add that to the list because it is more powerful if we can see sort yeah, of yeah yeah that, that's not a problem yeah yeah i can get you a price um for the building and um show you what it looks like on the both sides pictures pictures are worth a thousand words so, i know yeah, send us a phone um yep. so um how do people feel about finishing up in like by 6 30 does that seem to make sense absolutely yep, yep. Um, and um, yeah, any any other thoughts, Brian, about what you might need to generate these this stuff? <laughs> no, I mean I think what I'm hearing is for the next meeting we want to we want to continue the discussion on the on the criteria, but have have something written that we can all react to and, and comment on. Um, and I also try to find you know lists of stakeholders that have been generated from previous. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, planning projects in terms of help identify nonprofits and community groups and things like that. Um, I, I, I would just like to um, say that we have to keep in mind that this is about money. And whenever money is on the table, people ask questions. And how we approach this is gonna be very important to our ability to be able to recommend to the select board what they should do. Because if it's wishy-washy, if it's yeah. you know filled, filled with emotion, if it's filled with pie in the sky, then I can tell you that I doubt very much they're gonna act on it, on what kind of recommendations we make. So it has to be structured. And whatever we do, I think we should look for that structure um, in the recommendation process. The problem is it isn't going to go to town meeting, Paul. It's going to the selectmen are we're going to make a recommendation right. as, from this group, but right. then the select right. are going to decide. Well, they are, but but that but doesn't mean. Goes, I suppose it goes back to the voters if they don't like what they did, they vote them out. Right. Well, that's that's yeah. the answer. Yeah. Right. That's exactly it. And you know, I, I answered my own question. There you go. Okay. And so Brian, the, I, 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 oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I I would think that if whoever has the recommendation can make a strong backed up proposal to us, then this committee will make a comparable strong backed up recommendation to the select board and thus the town in general if it warrants it sure yeah right yeah and one yeah. other thought is you know we were talking about like how how we would structure the public outreach um feedback type thing is it something that <clears throat> the platform of the town meeting um information would be a place to let people know about this um you know because everybody um, gets information about town meeting and some people come to town meeting, not everybody, but, um, but it's something that everyone's invited to. So is that something we would want to do is like dovetail, um, getting the information about this out and 
the town meeting platform. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it just seems like a nice way to get the information out. Granted, that's a few months from now, and we're talking about maybe wanting to um, get stuff done before that, but I'm just wondering if that seems yeah, like- I, I would think we'd want to get some proposals and arguments in before mm -hmm. town meeting. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now maybe it's going to be, it gets to be a busy schedule with finance committee, right. select Absolutely. board hearings for the budget, but- you know, all, all this comes to a head at town meeting, and I think that, mm -hmm. and, and the more I think about it, I think that the idea of having people come in person or by Zoom or whatever, present a proposal and defend it and argue for yeah. it is better than mm -hmm. just sending in a proposal. Mm -hmm. and, and I also, Brian had mentioned something about it. Um, that there are some people where that would work really well, but um, maybe there's some ways that that might be a little problematic. Can you speak to that again, Brian? I was just, I think I was just debating the, the pros and cons of, of something like a survey as opposed to a, a public input session where, where it takes a little bit more effort to come and to, to show up for the public input session. Whereas I could fill out a, a you know, a survey monkey survey, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm watching you know, a football yeah. game or something. Right? My mind's not really on it. Well, that's a great idea, but I'm never going to do it. Yeah. So, so in other words, it shows more commitment. So that's better. I right. guess I just wanted to make sure that's what you were talking about. So yeah, that, yeah. that does make yeah, sense. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it's better that someone make the effort to come present and, you know, have an idea, present it, defend it. And then we can make a decision based on how strong the presentation is. Yeah, and... And it has to be vetted. I mean, this has to be a vetting process. And I don't think we can, um, you know, I mean, there's got to be a little push pushback. There's got to be a little questioning as to um, whatever they want to present. Um, yeah, definitely. Right. Criteria, capacity or, you know, ability to do it. We don't want, uh, you know, somebody that just a resident to show up saying, give me $10,000 and I'm going to, yeah, yeah. you know, or, or somebody has got a $600,000 project and we only got 450 for them to give to the whole town. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not going to pay Joe. Well, I can't use Smith cause there's, I, I don't know Mountain town, but um, uh, I don't know. I can't think of a name, but anybody did, you know, here's give me $6,000 and I'll tutor math students over zoom. Like, no. So should we have a, one of the list of criteria will be, be reasonable? Yeah. <laughs> should that be, be reasonable? No. Yeah. I mean, we have to be a little more firm. Can, that. That. can yeah. you, can you do what you're going to say you're going to do? And yeah, right. how yeah. can we be assured? You? <laughs> it's got to benefit the, the, the town and the residents of, or taxpayers of the town, I believe. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, so we have the, the, the question there is who would then present for, let's say, town budget? Let's say Tri Town Beach. Somebody from who Tri Town be, Beach has I got think it. Would, I think it'd be John, Jonathan that would do yeah. that. Okay. Or, so I'm just. Or, or yeah. it's like, you know, so for instance, Fred, that's a really great question because maybe the person that presents is someone like Scott Jackson who knows about, and I'm not, I'm just mentioning his name because he's um, a, an, agri, uh, a, an um, ecologist, but the problem with Triton Beach, at least according my problem with Triton right. Beach is the cooties in it. <laughs> so how do you get rid of that? So some yeah, of there's, there's a big ecological that. question. It's not just a recreational question with Triton exactly. Beach. Exactly. Right. So, right. so maybe, the, maybe that kind of person is someone who knows how to do that stuff. So yeah. it, it may not be the most obvious no, it, no, think. but, it, but yeah. such a project would, would involve get, getting an initial proposal and then calling in Scott Jackson and saying, okay, right. we right. have this, we know this is a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do we go about it? Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, I personally love that example because it's outdoor activity, which COVID um, prefers. It's something that could really benefit the town. It's definitely needed. So I think that's a great example 
that we can then riff off of for other examples that are similar, you know? So Yes, but we also would have to get Deerfield to buy into it. <laughs> That's true. That's so I'm, then what percentage do they pay? Right. <laughs> I'm getting a little okay. Fun. Okay, dear Phil, we're paying four hundred thousand. So where's your million? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, then I'm... we could we could have the uh, the beer concession that Jonathan desperately <laughs> wants to put out there. Right. We're devolving here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I think we need some layer of filtering, and this just struck me as we were all talking because we need some layer of filtering because we may not want everybody coming in and giving proposals. Right. Yeah. Why, in, why don't in we consider of, it like a higher, the equivalent of a hiring process where we get resumes and then have people yeah. in for interviews? Good. Yeah. I want to avoid that where we're sitting, you know, through a 30 minute dissertation presentation on. Right, but if we get written, you know, some sort of written proposal and it can just be two sentences, it doesn't have to be a, a full proposal. But something that we can sift through and say, we want to hear more about this. We don't need yes to hear no. more about that. And then have physical presentations. As I said, like a resume interview process. Mm -hmm. Is that, and does that happen before or after we rank the, well, not rank, but apply the criteria? Probably after, right? Yeah, I think after. the criteria gives us the framework that, because the, the, in my mind, the criteria is how we all together have a sense of what seems to matter most um, because that's something that we can, um, we can always change it. Like if, if a great idea comes up, it doesn't have to meet all the check boxes, but it can help us come to a consensus about what we're imagining this is all for. So it seems like end, having right. a list would be helpful. It would, it, it would be helpful. And I think in the end, it will be able to let us see what the value proposition of all of these individuals coming forth um, means to us. And if, um, and that's how, you know, at the end of the day, that's probably the way it's going to go. Whichever value, whichever uh, individual presents the greatest value to the town or to an endpoint, um, it's going to be more compelling on our part, at least to agree to that. Um, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Almost. So it's six twenty-eight. Um, should we? Okay. Should we do? Should we do homework assignments? So mine is. Yeah. I'm going to try to pull together the list of criteria, and I'm going to try to look up that stakeholder list that's okay. been used in other planning projects to try to give us an idea as to who we may want to reach out to. Um, what else is there? I think and it, we could all come up with our own um, stakeholder list too. And then, you know, we can all share it. Um, we come up with other ideas. So that seems good. Okay, come, come, come up with five to 10 stakeholders as to how you'd like to see this money spent. Is that kind of the way you'd like to go, Rebecca? Or yeah, well, yeah, I think I mean, Brian's, got, you know, going to kind of start. But yeah, I think we can all um, add it in and then um, and then continue to if we can come up with other ideas like you know, the water district needs are an example. Um, we can always keep adding to the list. Um, but we can't be we can't. We have to be ready to push back. I'm ready. I'm more okay. than ready. All right, good. Born ready. <laughs> and then, um, uh, kidding. Um, but um, and then, are we are we doing a once a month or is that what we're doing for meeting? Sounds good to me. I don't know. Um, okay. What do you then, think, Brian? Ready to make it work? Yeah, I'm open. I'm open for whatever. Okay. And then I, I the like. Okay. Busy meeting time, so for me, so. <laughs> All right, well, you you let us know, Brian, what looks good. And then, Fred, I, I, I do want to um, speak to your point about, like, it would be good for us to have a sense of where, what we're building toward in terms of being ready, 
so we're ready to start this actually um, dispersing money if, if we think it's appropriate. Yeah, so I think we'd, we'd have to start at least put ourselves in a position to consider specific proposals and not get paralysis by analysis. And exactly. That's a, a good down. way to put it. Exactly. So maybe, you know, maybe we're thinking by like end of March being ready to be potentially ready. Does that seem like a reasonable time frame? Um, yeah, I don't know. One meeting uh, a month. That's maybe two. Short. That's that's okay, yeah, not much. That's fine. Um, uh, other thoughts. Um, this does not have to go to town floor, so we could say June before the summer fun. hits. Yeah, that sounds so. great. I just I like the idea of sort of having a, a sketched out idea of what we're aiming for. Not that it's in stone or anything, but just you know. A, yeah, a, Paul, th this you're right. This doesn't have to go to town floor, but there are projects that might have to go to town floor that we might be considering. Yeah. Well, right. let's see what they are, and um, you know, and we'll go from there. All right. Okay. So you'll, yep. you'll send us a doodle, Brian, for next next meeting. Yep. Okay, cool. Perfect. All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Good night. Going. All right. See you.